Today we're learning to build a custom radial bar graph using Microsoft Charticulator. Let's jump in. To get started, we're going to open up charticulator.com and we're going to click this blue launch button. We're then going to select our sample data and get started. Now, this is one place to start, which is charticulator.com. The brand new update is that you can now create your own custom visuals within Power BI, which I wanna show you just a brief intro to opening up on Power BI. So from here in your desktop Power BI instance, click on the get more visuals ellipses here in the visualizations panel. Click get more visuals and then search Charticulator. There we go. Click add and it will show up here in this small section. Now there are benefits to using the app within Power BI as well as online from their website. Um, I suggest, um, you know, play around with both, but for sure using the online version um, is a bit more seamless. Uh, the drag and drops work a bit better, but you are able to do it within the app as well. So you'll just go up here and click edit from the beginning and then you'll be prompted with a uh, preview. There are two ways to start within Power BI Desktop. One is to create a brand new chart. The other is to import template. I'm gonna show you today how to import from a template. Now to get started, I do wanna first conceptualize how to use Charticulator. And to do that, I'm gonna remove this and let's take a look at this chart. So this is a regular bar chart. We have an X and Y axis, we have the titles of those, we have the data for the specific date or month, we have an accumulation of uh, a metric, so for example, profit, we have a legend that shows us what the colors mean, and we have a title. Um, the way that this is like building a house is that each of these pieces to the graph is for example, like a brick or a support beam or a window or the design or the orientation of your house. And so when we use Charticulator Visual App, what we're doing is we're basically building with the components of a graph, which would be the axis or the data point or the color or the, the spatial, you know, the gap in between the border. These are all small details that we don't think about because we already have them pre-built here for us. Today, since we're making the radial bar graph, it's actually this exact same graph, but we're going to take this X axis and we're gonna make it and turn it into a circle. Some people can even turn it into a spiral, which I'll show you um, how to do that as well. Let's head over to the website so that we can see the workspace a bit better. And I can give you the lay of the land. So when you use Microsoft Charticulator online, what you'll see is these panels. One's called Glyph, Layers, Attributes, Fields, and Scales. And then we have our workspace over here. Now, in the same analogy of the house, a glyph is going to be basically like your brick. It's going to be the building component of that the data will be represented on. So to get started on this specific radial bar graph, we're going to create a bar. And that's our first step. Next, we're going to orientate our bar graph in a circular fashion. And so what we need here is scaffold. So think of the way you build a house, you need support beams, you need to point it in the right direction, you need to know if you're going to make a two story house or a house shaped like a snake. So in this sense, we are making a circular graph. There you go. There's other options. You can even do a custom option here. Now, we need to tell each of these bars what to do. And they are going to be adjusted by a specific measure, which is our profit. The reason why I like using the charticulator.com is because the drag and drops work really well. 
So we can drop the profit to the height or the width. In this case, we're going to do height. There we go. And as you can see within this um, area here of our workspace, you've seen that each of these have adjusted. Now, something that we didn't do is we didn't add in the x axis. So we need to organize this by dragging our month to the angular axis. There we go. So now it's oriented by month. Now we can move down into the layers tab and the attributes tab. Think of these as um, layers. So if you've ever used Photoshop or um, any photo editing system, you work with layers. And these are the specific, again, specific components of our house, right? We have our shape, that's our brick. We have our title. Maybe that's like the address. <laughs> we have the plot segment and the direction. We can adjust this by opening up into a half circle if we'd like. There's a lot here, and I want you all to be oriented so that you're more familiar with playing around with this. In the attribute section, this is how we adjust, you know, our color, our size. We can make sure that the angles are specific, the radius is a certain number. We can categorize our data by the month. We could add a dynamic color, which is what I'm going to show you right now. So what we want is to change our shape, our glyph, to be segment to our segment, which is our category. And so in the style area, you can drag and drop segment or any uh, field into uh, this option right here. What we're going to use is fill. This is going to bind the fill color to the segment listed on that data point. And so now we have our colors to represent our different segments of uh, where our profit is coming from. Now, what's very helpful here is to add a legend. Actually, quite easy. There's an icon right here. We're going to add it for the segment because that's what our colors represent. And now, one is we can get rid of the title because we can actually add that in via Power BI. This is simply the graph that we're making. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. Now, you can see these dotted lines. These are our guides. In you know, Photoshop and stuff, they have those as well, but they're, not, they're stagnant. These ones are dynamic, so we can move them to adjust the frame. Now, the other thing that we can do, which I was showing you a bit earlier, is I'd like to adjust this chart because it's in a crazy order, we're going to adjust it so that January is at the top, because that's the start of our, oh, it is not in order, so we need to definitely put it in order. There we go. Now what I did there is I changed the month field to categorical instead of ordinary. So categorical recognize that it is a date. And so then it put it into the order in which dates work. So obviously January, February, March. So I want to be sure to try, I want to try to get three months in each quadrant. If you see what I mean, that's going to help us or the, the user see each quarter broken down into each of the quadrants. So January, February, March, that's Q Q1, April, May, June, Q2, etc. So the orientation is now how I'd like it. Okay. The last bit that we can fix is the height. Right now it's, um, you can change it from sum to average, etc. but currently we want to keep that on sum. Now that's the last step, and what you would do now is save it and export it as a template. So one, it'll help you quickly utilize the visual within Power BI. And let's jump over there for the last bit of this video, um, and I'll show you how to import a template. So we're going to open up that Articulator visual. We're going to 
click on the three dots, edit, and we're going to drag and drop our fields that we're wanting. So it's important to drag them into this data section. We had our year, date, profit, and the segment. All right, and now you can see that these buttons are available to click. Let's go ahead and click Import Template. Now I'm going to do a spiral graph. Um, what we did earlier was a nightingale chart, uh, which is basically a, a circular bar graph, but let's do the spiral chart because I want to show you how cool that one is. Um, the template will ask you to map your data. So the fields um, that are needed as a date and simply like a category or steps. So as you can see, our data is not compatible for the date. Let's check why. It is compatible for, for the steps, but let's click cancel. I believe we'll need to change the date. Instead of hierarchy, let's just change it to the date. Let's try again. All right, there you go. So now our date is mapping to our date and our steps can be now mapped to our profit. There we go. All right, so now you can see what this would look like in your Power BI desktop. As you can tell, it is a bit tight. Uh, there's not too much room to work with. It's a bit small, which is why I suggest using the, the website instead. However, you're still able to, to use it. It's best to use um, using your template, to be honest. Um, yeah, so the reason why this is so great is because one, you could use it to make custom branded visuals. You could use it to make custom shapes. For example, you could make a U shape. It doesn't necessarily have to be a spiral. Um, that's why I really like this feature. It's pretty cool. Um, now I'm not the best at drawing a spiral, so I may have to just go back to the normal uh, spiral by clicking this button here. But as you can see, there's a lot of customization. This is um, just a very simple example of a bar graph. And what's so impressive about Microsoft's use of Charticulator is that it is a no-code custom visual. And so prior to this, the only way to make custom visuals truly was through like Python or R or knowing some sort of coding language. So to make this an available option for people um, maybe like you or me who don't know Python or, or R to the best of our ability, this is a great way for us to create our own custom visuals and to make something really special for our clients or for our company. All right, so that wraps up our tutorial on how to use Charticulator in Power BI as well as on their website. This is a great option if you're looking for ways to improve your skills as a data analyst. And like I said, this no code to low code options becoming more available is a huge step in the right direction. Um, and it's an exciting time to be in this space. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and we will talk to you later.